actually beginning was me taking acting classes. Don't remember what year, um, actually. But I studied for a good two years before I even felt comfortable to start auditioning for even community theater and stuff like that. Um, and uh, my first play was a Chekhov play, playing the girl in this series of vignettes. I can't remember the name of the plays, the the actual show. Um, but it was quite, it's funny how it's, controversy seems to follow my career because that was actually quite controversial because the girl was actually playing a prostitute. And it's not like there was anything really kind of going on, it's, but the fact that it was being played in this theater that was housed underneath a church was what the controversy was all about because <clears throat> some of the parishioners found out about it or something like that and they wanted to take this vignette out but basically it was a dad taking his son to you know lose his virginity and stuff like that um i just i just made that connection and then you know here you go how many years later it's like clerks the other controversy is to the whole number thing. <laughs> it's kind of weird because I, I know you quite well. And <laughs> I know, that's so far from me. <laughs> I know, so far from who I am as a person and things like that. I mean, I'm no prude, but it's not something that I put out there in that way or anything like that. <laughs> um, but, uh, because you were married young and a very nice person. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> normal. Yeah. Uh, but what is normal, though? <laughs> what is normal? Um, but, but there was... Uh, now, where was this? Where were you living? This was in New Jersey. Um, the theater was actually in Madawan, uh, First Presbyterian Church, I think it was. I'm trying to think of the name. I'd have to look at my resume to actually remember the, uh, the, the name of the theater. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I did quite a few theater runs, community theater wise, and, and got my experience there. And while I was in the middle of a show called Same Time Next Year, um, in, uh, Red Bank, as a matter of fact, found out about, uh, this kid that, that's how they worded it, that was making his own movie. I was like, I didn't care. And uh, I didn't care who was, how old or whatever, you know, I just went and I auditioned for Clerks and uh, happened to get cast in that. And that's basically what I'm really known for. And that was back in, it was filmed in 93, released in 94. Um, and then since then, I've been doing other little independent movies here and there and trying to make my mark, as they say. So that was, that was really the first movie you're ever in any piece of visual media that you were um first movie that i will say that i was in because <laughs> i was in these these other little tidbit things it's like that really just really never amounted to anything and um i you know there's always those movies that you do that you're just like why did i do that and uh so there was this one small little thing before clerks but clerks is what i really count as my first movie and being on a, on a movie set back then, um, what was the feeling? What was the vibe? Was there a, you know, everyone says, oh, in retrospect, it was, we expected it to be this big movie. We knew it was going to be. But I mean, surely you were on set and said, this is going to be a pile of crap. No, I didn't say that. I, I, I didn't have that in my thought. Although it's like there's this funny little um, uh, story that Kevin likes to, to put out there. Is like, because um, I, during callbacks, I don't know if it was callbacks actually or if it was actually me coming in there to, to read opposite the Dantes that they had um, because I think he pretty much had me set for Veronica right from the start. Um, but uh, he had another set of auditions where he was auditioning the Dantes and that's where I saw Brian was actually in it. And, and somewhere during the course of that night, I actually mentioned, um, so this is kind of like a B-movie. And the funny thing is, it's like, I didn't mean it in that way. To me, it's, it's, 
I didn't know how to classify it at that time or anything like that. Um, but the funny thing is, it's like about five months ago, I decided after hearing this whole story again, I'm like, you know, let me, let me Google and see what is the definition of a B-movie? Independent film. That's the definition of a B-movie. So I'm like, yeah, okay. What I had in my mind, which I didn't know how to classify or, or actually explain at that point, is what I had in my mind. It's a B-movie. So basically, that's what it was. And it's like, so, I mean, I didn't take offense to it in, in, in any way or anything like that. But as far as, like, the filming of the movie itself, I, for me, I was getting to actually take my training to the next level. So that's how I saw it. I enjoyed the whole process and we were all basically learning together. It's like, because Kevin, he had basically taken the training that he had in film school along with Scott and Dave and we were trying to make something of it. So I don't, I know for me, I didn't have any preconceived notions of what may or may not happen. I didn't know. I was just getting to work on a film. And it was a lucky break. It was, it was, it was a huge lucky break. I, I mean, we were just kind of riding the wave that was happening there. I, we, at each turn, we, when we were letting, be let known what was going on, it was like, oh, I, it's kind of hard to put into words. It's like, you don't, you just don't know. It's surreal. Kevin had actually, when he called me after the auditions, um, he called me to see, to go down to the convenience store, pick up the script, read it, to see if I had any issues with what I had to talk about. Did you say go to the convenience store? Uh-huh. Where, where he was working, the convenience store where he was working. I actually, um, because he was actually working there at the time that he was putting it all together. Do you think that was a bit strange? No, actually I didn't. Hey, it was a convenience store. It's like, better that than his home. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I went down there, we talked, uh, he told me exactly what was kind of going on. I took the script home. I read it actually while I was at work the next day and I was kind of laughing and I had no issues with the whole scene that they were talking about, about, uh, the number 37, uh, as to how many men... I've pleasured, I guess, is a way, good way to put it, um, <clears throat> because it's you know it's, it was it was all talk. It wasn't like I, there was any nudity in it. There was it. It wasn't like I was you know showing anything. It was just basically a conversation between two people who were in love and all that kind of stuff. So I had no issues with it whatsoever. Um, and then, you know, it was like. Even when I saw the film, once we screened it at the IFFM for the first time, that's when I first saw it. Um, it's, I, you know, I didn't even look at it that way. If anything, I was looking at my performance and, and uh, kind of cringing at certain areas where I was like, oh, I didn't like that. I didn't like my performance in that section. And once the movie actually was re-edited and all that kind of stuff, they took out the scenes that I really hated about myself anyway. So I was good with that. Um, the controversy really didn't hit again until the whole rating system when the movie came out or prior to it coming out and um there was it had to go to court for the nc-17 rating so that we could that it could be switched to an r rating versus the nc-17 rating and alan dershowitz was the attorney at that time um so they were, they were trying to rate the film based upon based upon my uh, performance, or not so, so not so much the performance, but my topic of conversation for my scene with Brian or Veronica's scene with Dante <laughs> about the whole number thirty-seven. That was enough to push it into a to an NC seventeen, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, but uh, they prevailed; <laughs> they won the case, and they were able to get the R rating. But yeah, it's funny, um, very recently with me uh, talking about the 20th anniversary on Facebook and, and all that, somebody questioned, it's like, Marilyn, that really must get old. And my comment to him was, imagine hearing the same joke for 20 years. 
I mean, yeah, does it kind of get old? Sure. Everybody thinks they're original. And for the most part, it really does not bother me. But it's the people that don't know where to draw the fine line. Well, That's when that. it bothers me. So, so, what, so you're saying basically that there are people out there who see your character and think that's you. So is that right? Yeah, and even so, there are some people that will think that it's me, but it's like, but then there are some people say it's like, oh no, no, I know it's not you. It's I, it's I know it's the character, but but they're still kind of directing it at me. And like I said, it's like when there's that fine, they're they're going over that fine line. It's get it's very uncomfortable, very uncomfortable, and um, and unfortunately, it's like at the time that the whole thing was kind of happening with Clerks, I was actually in a relationship, so. I never, it never kind of got weird or anything like that because it's like we were kind of going through it together and there, was, there wasn't any of that weird stuff. But then a few years ago when I got into a relationship, that's where like there were snickers and it's like, ooh, you're waking up next to Veronica and all that kind of stuff and that was weird. Yeah. Yeah, there were, there, there were, I, I heard some kind of snide remarks sometimes and Lots of times I would kind of ignore it because I just, I just didn't want to deal with that. <laughs> I started doing a podcast with the person that I was in a relationship with. Um, and as bad as that whole situation was, I can at least take a lot of good from it as well, thankfully. Um, but uh, I, I met so many great people, and one of them being Neil. And... Uh, who I think is is pretty uh, uh, talented in what he does, and uh, and he was uh, kind enough to give me a role, and actually uh, crew work on uh, on uh, Alien Armageddon, and uh, so I did some uh, hair and makeup work on that, and uh, also did a role in where we bring that controversy about <laughs> as I'm uh, held captive by the aliens and uh, connected to this contraption that uh, basically puts me in eternal labor. <laughs> but <laughs> not for what uh, anyone wants to be in labor for. Um, but I had a really nice experience on that because um, it's, it was kind of drawing me back to the days of clerks in, in some way um, where everybody pitches in, everybody helps out in whatever way that you can and uh, there's no um, egos, there's no airs about who is, you know, who's top notch on this or anything like that. I really enjoyed that part actually. I don't know, you know, and it really didn't hit me until after the whole thing was done and then it's like you guys taking photos. <laughs> laying there with this sheet full of blood <laughs> and I'm looking at this and I'm like well that's that's gonna be another controversial piece <laughs> because it's just I, I know that people have told me it's like they had a hard time watching it, it it's 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 quite an intense scene um, and I know that Catherine <laughs> poor thing I think she still has nightmares about it <laughs> Um, it, it, it just, you know, while she was there, I mean, I couldn't see a thing. I had, uh, lenses over my eyes and I, I, all I saw was shadows. Um, if there was even some light behind somewhere, uh, otherwise I couldn't see a darn thing, but I could hear it in her voice. She was just so disturbed by what she was seeing. So if anything, it lended to her character and, and what was going on and what was happening in the scene. <laughs> Were there any, um... Weird questions in the media about that film or, you know, any, any um, fan reactions or anything like that? Uh, not that I can recall, actually. It's like just some fans saying how it's like, wow, that was, that, you were great in that. It's like, that was a really disturbing scene. Um, and they were able to, I, I guess, take the fact away that this was Veronica and this is someone else. And uh, someone had mentioned that to me, and I was like, that, that meant a lot, actually. 
So you're saying uh, because of that clerks thing, you were typecast a lot, and people were only seeing you in that way. That way. Yeah. Um. Well, by that way, I don't know if you mean. Um, uh, to have controversy attached to it, I guess I don't know. The yeah, I mean th- definitely. I'm 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 typecast as the clerks girl, and um, I know that kind of uh, branching out into other areas and other, say, like a movie of the week and things like that, it's been a little bit difficult for casting directors to kind of see me as anything other than the clerk's girl and the controversy behind that. I, I, my manager can vouch for that. Um, so it's it's been a little bit difficult to kind of break that barrier and, uh, you know, to... that, And that's why I trying to cast myself in certain other avenues so that I can show people that, it, you know, I'm not, not just clerks. Um, I'm not just Veronica. And I'm not just the so controversial. You- <laughs> that's like, because that's not who I am as a person. And, and the thing is, it's like, after clerks was shown and, and the people that I worked with and people who knew me personally and, and just even the cursing alone, not never mind the other stuff, but just on the cursing alone, people were like, Marilyn, I've never heard you curse. Good point. I've never heard you curse. <laughs> so, but I definitely do a lot more now than I did back then. But, but you know, it just goes to show that the person that they were seeing up on the screen was not the person that they knew. And that's always been the problem, hasn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think to a lot of degree, people... And I don't know if that's just, you know, with me. I think that's actually true of a lot of actors as well. Um, they get famous for a role, and they get typecast as it, and uh, they have to break the barrier. Well, let's, let's just, you know, hit up on that before we talk about Stasha. Who is the real Marilyn Gigliotti? You know, who are you? I... And someone who is very loyal to my friends, caring about everything, and I don't like lying, <laughs> even if it's kind of twisting certain things. It's like when, when people want me to say, it's like, oh, why don't you just say this? It's like, you know, even if it's not, I'm like, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. That's not who I am. So I, I'm... I'm pretty moral to some degree, you know, and and if anybody tries to hurt any of my friends, I may be shy, not as shy as I used to be, but as shy as I am, you try to hurt anybody that I love, watch out. <laughs> the, the Puerto Rican Italian in me <laughs> will come out. <laughs> um, Neil talked about... Um, another movie that he was going to be doing and uh, shooting two at the same time. And um, as much as he asked me, it's like, you know, what I wanted, it's okay, because he actually did get back to me and asking me, it's like, what kind of role did I want? And so I would a- actually say, it's like, I just, I, I just wanted something that was strong um, that uh, could show me in, in, in a very different way that most people saw me. But, and even though... Uh, Veronica is a strong woman. Um, I just there was, but there's still something a little bit different as to that character and the character that I actually play in Starship Rising, which is Zarzis. And she's not only a woman who's very strong, but she's in control, in control of a lot of people, in control of a business, in control of of a lot of things. It's like just a, she's a leader. Um, and I don't think I've ever actually played anything like that before. Um, and so there, there definitely is a difference in playing a leader and playing a strong woman. Um, so I, I really enjoyed playing that role and just playing um, something that's just very authoritative uh, and someone who, who basically has to lead a world. And also inspire a, 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 a 
the main character of the film. Too. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, because she's also not not to mention she's a leader, but she's also a mother, um, trying to set an example for her and for what she might have for herself in the future. And, and pretty much you're in charge of an uprising, you know, a secret robot uprising, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought that was actually quite, quite neat um, because there's kind of an uprising of worlds and uh, I take part in this in, in the sense of creating this new form I, I guess it's the best way to put it, of of ways of helping humanity to to fight against evil. I mean, I mean, in essence, you are a you're an arms dealer. <laughs> uh, you know, robot. I don't think I would see it that way. <laughs> um, but but you, you, your character supplied um, robot <clears throat> military robots to a to a a uh, religious uprising. You know, mm-hmm. what can you tell me about that? Um, you know, uh, you know, like I said, it's like I don't know that I would see it like that as an arms dealer, but but she saw that she, something was needed. And it's like, and I guess to some degree, she was also a, a, a scientist to some degree. I mean, you know, making these 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 robots. Um, but there was an oppression, and as a woman and a mother to see that this was needed because um, of, of the oppression of women that we still have today. So in order to fight that oppression so that we are not taken down, I mean, honestly, it's like, if the world did not have women, <laughs> where would humanity go? Um, it's, it's, it's actually kind of funny how belittled women are, especially in some countries, but they have to do everything for the man, raise the child that they can only have. And to see the way that women are seen in that way, that they're held below a dog sometimes, even in some countries. But yet, they depend on the woman as well. Why is that, do you think? Why do men do that, in your opinion? I don't know. I actually, I, I, I can't even fathom to think why that is. I mean, because obviously it's been around since the beginning of time. So, what was it? Was it because God was supposedly a guy? I, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I, it's, it's, it's hard to actually think that way, it's, especially being a woman. It's kind of hard to put yourself in that, in that position as, to, to think as to why that is. Well, let's talk about... Um, <clears throat> I mean, obviously I'm a man, so mm-hmm. I only have a certain perspective. Right. Um, do you still see that today, in, even in this Western society? Do you still see some slight looking down, talking down to oppression in this society? And how does it feel? You know, because I don't know. I can't. I have mm-hmm. no perspective. Um, I think it's gotten better here in the Western society, but I don't know that it's it's still not an equal partnership in that sense. Um, I mean. Because women make less than guys out in the the the, the um, working world, um, <clears throat> uh, and it's even more so. It's even worse in, in in third world countries. I don't. I it's. I think it's going to take a long time before it actually gets any better. Because there, as lo- even though there are guys now that see that. Yes, there's a lot to hold up to a woman there then that that uh, and maybe some put them on a pedestal. But it's really not about putting us on a pedestal. I don't think we should be there either. It's about equality. No matter what in any you know, in any relationship. So I guess when you're on a pedestal the, the, the only way 
And then, right. from a pedal, yeah, the only way to fall from a pedestal is, is actually falling off of it and all that kind of stuff. It, it, yeah, it's, it's, and it's a hard drop. Um, so putting, putting anybody on a pedestal is not the way to go in any way. Um, that just has to be quality in all, in all aspects of, of any, you know, it, and it doesn't matter whether it's male, female, race, ethnicity, it doesn't matter. In anything, we are all. It's like take away, take away the skin, take away the gender, take away everything. We're all the same. Something in some way, in that respect, whatever it may be, almost is needs needs to happen. But then again. <clears throat> Um, it's people being what they are because they can't handle change they can't handle different there's only going to be fear do, do, you, do you feel that maybe in your opinion is religion to blame for that that this inequality or will the inequality exist regardless of religion I think it would <laughs> I think it would be there regardless of religion I mean everything seems to either be based on religion or politics but I think it would be there regardless so what you're saying is that religion and politics are really just guises for, our, for uh, disguises for our own natural um, prejudices would you say that? yeah yeah Yep. It's a valid statement. Very valid. <laughs> In my opinion. <laughs> Let's continue about Starship. Um, <coughs> so, <clears throat> much bigger film, obviously, than Alien Armageddon. Mm -hmm. um, and a bigger set, of course. You know, bigger mm -hmm. vibe, I guess. And you were working with some nice people. Um, you know, like Emmy and stuff. Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, which, you know, you guys seem to look... Very similar, mm -hmm. with cheekbones. Mm -hmm. What can you tell me about working with her? You know, it's funny. Um, I actually had a conversation with her one day while we were on set. I can't remember if I was actually, if it was the day that we were, I was playing her mom, or if it was the day that I was doing set photography or not. Um, but uh, we started having a conversation, and I asked her. It's like you know, so, so, uh, how how long have you been acting? She's like, well, this is actually my first um, acting job, and I was like, really. I wouldn't have known. Um, so, I mean, it was actually quite nice working with her because she she was really driven. She was really into doing the best possible performance that she could do for herself. So I, I, I gave her a lot of credit for that. Um, so I, I had I had a nice time actually working with her. I actually with everybody, you know. You know, the, the, the nice thing about actually working on your films is, is there never seems to be any egos um, and I don't know if maybe that's a testament as to who you are um, it's like you know trying to keep that away um, but it just it just there's always a nice environment a nice vibe when working on, on, on your films and things like that so I, I, I just enjoyed and I hope to work with them again you know because there is the whole possibility of a number three so <laughs> that 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 actually be nice what you did um well there's always the insinuation of my death in uh in the second one um but uh my death is actually isn't really seen so there's no way to know whether we actually actually die or not um and as smart as she was as a person, I would think that she had, uh, what's the word, um, plans that if anything were to go wrong, that she'd know how to take care of certain things. So, um, uh, let's talk about Darren. Mm -hmm. He was a... Um, it's tall. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's, you did a couple of nice scenes with him. Yeah, yeah. I, I no, I, God, you know. On a whole, I just really enjoyed the character. Really enjoyed 
embodying like who she was and what um, she believed in and all that kind of stuff. And, and so I, I just really enjoyed the scenes that I had with the people that I had um, and Darren being one of them definitely <clears throat> because it was seeing something in the character of his character that maybe he wasn't as bad as he was portrayed to be and, and, and so saw that and was able to kind of talk to him in a certain way but it's it's kind of funny though it's like you know the scenes that we actually had together and it's like I'm looking up at him and it's like I have to give him this this whole pat on the shoulder and it's like yeah <laughs> oh, but you know makes for fun <laughs> <laughs> and it's like the only thing that actually kind of sticks in my mind too is the time where it's like I had to make up the um, the the language with Emmy. <laughs> it's like you're just basically just kind of doing it there on the spot. <laughs> um, and I I really wished to have actually gotten together with her. It's like but there was just no time to actually get together with her and talk that out a little bit and see what we can maybe make up um, but I think it went well see, really? <laughs> I thought you were speaking Portuguese or something <laughs> so, what yeah. language do you speak? I do, I do speak Spanish you do speak Spanish? Mm -hmm. there was a Spanish no <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't even remember what I said <laughs> you're whispering yeah <laughs>